So thanks to everybody here and beyond, our voices is getting stronger and stronger. It got so strong that in January 2018, it sent a shockwave through the big hill in Boston, when more than a thousand people packed the state house to testify against Bill H3361 that called for data disaggregation for Asian Americans only. Many of us uh, talked to our state legislators before the uh, hearing and we asked for their support. And the grand prize went to our friends in Andover when their representative joined us in the hearing and testified with us.
understanding of politics and particularly Massachusetts politics. And I said, well, the first thing I think we want to do is we want to share with the sponsor of the bill our dissatisfaction. But we want to share them with why you are dissatisfied. We want to politely let them know what is going on. So I said, the first thing you want to do is you want to send an email to the chairman uh, of the committee and the person that's filed the bill, Representative Taki Chan. So they did. About two weeks later, I was in the chamber and Representative Chan came up to me and said, uh, Jim, enough with the emails. <laughs> it was 275, 300 emails, and they just kept coming and coming and coming. So we brought it to his attention. That was step number one, to have your community unite in opposition to a particular bill. That is what we call grassroots politics in America. And that is politics 101, where we people unite and they move forward as a group and steadfastly make sure that the, our opponents know what we stand for. We don't have to do it in a mean way. We don't have to do it in an angry way. We have to do it in a peaceful, loving way and point out to people, this is what that bill does to me in my community. And that's exactly what these folks did. And then the day of this hearing, I have to tell you, I was, uh, I had another hearing in the morning, and uh, Scott, a group of the Chinese community came in, and we had a little meeting, and I said, I'll be down at, at about one o'clock. I had no idea what I was walking into. I had absolutely no idea. I walked into this God in the auditorium, and there wasn't another seat to be found anywhere. And as I walked in, I looked around, and I, I didn't know whether these folks were with us or against us when I first walked in. I didn't know whether the other side, because I knew that the other side had been geared up and they wanted this law to be passed. And so as I walked in, I, I, as a legislator, you can have an opportunity to let the chairman know that you want to speak. So I let them know that I wanted to speak. And, uh, Three of us walked down, and as we walked down, the uh, auditorium erupted in applause. It was just an amazing uh, opportunity for me to sit down, and I, I sat down, and I looked at the chairman, and I said, Mr. Chairman, I, I really want to apologize, uh, you know, for uh, the, 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 the loud applause. I think these folks thought Tom Brady was in the house. <laughs> and in the event, that day proved to be pivotal in the journey to defeat this piece of discriminatory legislation. And, uh, and because of the efforts of you people in the community that you represent, you had a loud, clear voice on Beacon Hill. We are not going to be put into a corner and be discriminated against because of our heritage. And the way the bill was explained to me, it is a way, I'm an Irish Catholic. My father was a proud Irishman. And if anyone ever told him that he had to go fill out a form to get the benefits that he's entitled to as an American citizen, let me tell you, all hell would have broke loose. And the way they... And no Asian American, no Chinese American, no American, should ever be put in that position, but yet that's what the progressives on Beacon Hill want to do. They want to control every aspect of your life. They want to know everything about you. And that's not what America is all about. America is about freedom. America is about individual responsibility. And America is about standing up for the values that you people believe in. And it was the efforts of the people in the grassroots and the job that they did to bring it to a legislator and for you, the, the work that you did was because of you. And there's a great lesson to be learned in that. I'm also going to share with you another story that, that happened uh, on Beacon Hill. Uh, Scott's asked me to and a couple of other folks have asked me to. I don't know whether, how, how many of you people are uh, familiar with the Gender X bill. But there's a bill that was trying to be passed in the last day of session. We have a Senate president who determined that one of the most important pieces of legislation that should be passed is on our license, we have male and female. And she thought it was important that we flip X for anybody else. 
as if there isn't any uh, anybody else. But that's the priority of the progressives on Beacon Hill. We have male, female, and, and gender X. So we came back around 10, 15 at night. It was the last night of session. Now it's important for you to know that one legislator could shut down the session at, at midnight, no matter what was on the agenda. And I've done that five years in a row. Because <laughs>
And the final thing I want to I want to point out to you is don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. One person can make a difference. And you people started to make a difference when you stood up and said we're going to vote out to our legislature. And it's because of the efforts of your community. And the message that I heard earlier today is loud and clear. We have to be smart. 